an early 60s Lincoln Continental, a 1970 Dodge Charger. Yes, you heard that right. A 1970 Dodge Charger at a self-service yard. A 1977 Ford Thunderbird and a 1979 Alfa Romeo Sprint Veloce. Let's go to the yard. There's one that actually just arrived out here yesterday and it's already been pretty well stripped. This is the 1977 Ford Thunderbird. Um, so it still has a lot of good parts on it though. You look, the, uh, the grill's still intact, although now it looks like it's actually damaged. That's probably not why no one's grabbed it. Um, so these have the hideaway headlights in it, which they're stuck up. They're a vacuum operated deal, just like the uh, Lincoln Mark series cars. Um, this one's got like a 351 in it. Uh, someone's already grabbed the radiator out of this guy. Um, didn't look like it was too bad. It's got like a hole in the side. And that actually could be from, I don't know, it looks like someone just got angry and started whacking at it or something. I don't think that's forklift damage. Uh, someone's got the instrument cluster out of it already and taken the dash pad. Um, not in that great a shape. Uh, not necessarily something someone would have done something with, but not a car you see anymore. Uh, definitely not a common sight on the roads as they were maybe like 25 or 30 years ago. But uh, these, these ride real nice, just like the uh, Mark series cars of, of this era. And uh, uh, it's really sad to see them uh, winding up out here. But yeah, this one's definitely was, was too far gone to do anything with. It looks like someone smashed the uh, front windshield for some, some reason. I think they were just, oh, they were trying to get the dash apart is what was going on there, definitely. But uh, it's like even the alternator was kind of like a newer alternator on this one. Yeah, again, kind of like a cool uh, late 70s Thunderbird, a malaise classic. But it's out here at the uh, self-service wrecking yard. There's a real interesting car. This is a 1979 Alfa Romeo Sprint Veloce. Uh, nice little sporty coupe. Uh, hopefully that noise isn't coming in too bad in the background. They're like... Unfortunately, this, this yard here accompanies a, like a, another yard where they do a lot of metal work. Motor's completely gone, as well as the transmission. It was a manual transmission car. Not, not a very common car on these shores. I imagine there's not too many left in Italy either, and the body actually looked like it was pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure if the engine transmission were in it when it came in. This, this actually just popped up out here today, so um, really interesting car. You can see the boot there where the transmission came through. Shows like 30,000 miles, so I'm guessing it's 130,000 miles. Um, interior's completely shot. I know uh, Italian cars from that era, like the interiors are usually completely shot if they've been in the California sun, because I, I, I had a couple Fiats that that was the case. Taillights and everything else are still there. It's a nice little uh, hatchback design. See the outline where it had a, a blue California license plate, one A series, so probably the original plate for the car. Um, since they switched to the uh, six to the seven digit in the blue plates uh, in about 1980, 1979. So it's probably just a 79 that was sold a little late. Um, yeah, the body wasn't too bad. I don't know the values on these, but uh, check this out. It's got like an old school uh, cassette deck in it. Looks like this thing had sat a long time. I'm guessing uh, someone might have called the donation or just called pick apart with this. Come get it. Someone had done something with it, maybe. Been a cool like uh, 24 hours of lemons car or something like that. But uh, yeah, this thing's pretty crispy and pretty bad. But uh, kind of like an interesting piece of Italian uh, motoring history, if you will. Okay, this one was kind of a surprise. It actually doesn't even show up on their website or anything. It's just sort of out here and doesn't even have a tag that tells what year it is. It's a uh, Lincoln Continental. I'm guessing it's a 62 to 64. So it could be a 62, 63, or 64, because uh, judging by the grill, because uh, I know 61, it had like a different bar in the middle, and then in 65, they redesigned the front end a little bit. So it's somewhere in there, early 60s uh, Lincoln Continental. It's seen better days. You can see it looks like it sat somewhere like under a tree or something for many years. I think this is the this is the MEL motor. I think these are like a 430, if I remember right. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's the MEL, the Mercury Edsel Lincoln block. Uh, that's way more difficult to get parts for than like an FE or something like that. Um, fenders don't look too bad. I mean, this car never would have gotten restored. It would cost literally a, a fortune to restore one of these. Um, dash was completely toast. Looks like someone's already grabbed the uh, instrument cluster, or most of the instrument cluster out of it anyway. There's even an old uh, cassette there. 
So we'll take the wheel off. But this is a suicide door car. That's why they call them the suicide door because the uh, rear doors fling open like that. Of course, I think they brought it back as like a special edition where you can get suicide doors on one of the new Continentals. But they only made a few of them, which is kind of amazing. The uh, DOT let that slide. But uh, here's the trunk lid. It's just sort of hanging around here. See, it's completely rusty. So I'm guessing some moisture sat on top of it since it's very flat. Uh, someone let the part the quarter there to get to the tail light. Bumper's still there. It's like uh, this thing just was pretty bad sitting under a tree somewhere. But uh, man, I don't know. Nobody would have restored this, but there's definitely a lot of good parts on it. Um, but looks like something, something that was abandoned many, many years ago and uh, unfortunately kind of left for dead. Actually, my dad had. My dad's owned a few of these over the years, or he did, and then uh, my uncle actually had a black one that had gotten stolen back when I was a kid. So uh, there's a few of these in my life. Like I said, they're very expensive to restore, but there's a lot of good parts on this one. I don't know if, uh, I might tell some of my friends are into Lincolns that it's out here, because like I said, it's not even on the uh, website. So I didn't even know this was gonna be here until I got here, so. It's a very interesting car. So it'll be a 62 to 64. I'm guessing maybe the grills might have differences in the years, but uh, there's a good shot of the grill. But uh, definitely lots of good parts left on it. Looks like it has the remains of like an original dealer frame, unfortunately, which I probably would have grabbed it if it was there. But they always rip the plates off before they uh, set them out here. But uh, wow, interesting to see a uh, early 60s Continental here at uh, the old uh, salvage yard. All right, here's uh, one of the rarest, or I don't know about rarest, but one of the most desirable cars I think we've ever had on uh, this series here. This is a 1970 Dodge Charger. Now you're probably like, a 70 Dodge Charger at a self-service yard. Um, this car actually came in yesterday. <laughs> it popped up, it came in yesterday, and it was pretty complete. Uh, but as you're gonna see, it's, it's got a lot of body damage, like it was hit pretty hard. Um, and somebody's actually already come in here and just like stripped everything off of this car. In fact, uh, this guy back here, he's uh, he's working on it right now, and actually I got him to subscribe to the channel, which you should do too. Um, so we're gonna check this thing out. It's pretty much like a base charger, uh, 318 car. Um, actually, I got the carburetor, I got the uh, two barrel carburetor off of it, because uh, I, I need it for another project. So I already grabbed that off of it. Most of the other good stuff is completely gone. I was checking the rear end. The rear end looks like it's completely shot. There's a loud noise over there. Hopefully it doesn't pick it up too bad. Someone's grabbed the dash, the dash and the wheel and the steering column. All that stuff was in here because I, I can't post the pictures that are on the website, unfortunately, because uh, I think they're copyrighted. So because their website is actually says copyright. So I don't I don't I don't intend to do that. Um, but there's the 318. There was this bar here. Someone had used a seatbelt to go around the engine. Looked like they were going to try to pull that 318 out and kind of gave up because Everything's kind of shoved in there, which is good because I got the carburetor. Um, so they pulled all the glass out of it, everything they could. Like I said, nothing left of this thing. And it's just really sad because I'm sure anybody my age or somewhere, say, within 10 years of my age, remembers the Dukes of Hazard and really idolized these cars. And check out the back end here where it's just completely smashed in. That's why I don't think the rear end is any good or I'm not even going to try. Gas tank's completely pushed in. Rear bumper, there's those iconic Charger taillights. Everything is just, just hit hard. Looks like it was either like a Mack truck hit it, or maybe somebody was on their phone, they weren't paying attention, and they didn't slow down, and just totally annihilated this uh, 1970 Dodge Charger. I mean, this thing is just complete toast. I don't know if it went through an insurance auction. This car looks like it was off the road maybe for a while. Let me show you the back window. There was a little bit of rust there, looks like. But uh, yeah, around the window. But uh, I mean, if this was in somebody's yard and it did not have a salvage title, it's really sad because you can buy body shells for these. I mean, these are that valuable car that they do reproduce body shells for them for the uh, 68 to 70 Chargers. Just absolutely sad to see a 1970 Charger winding up at a wrecking yard. But uh, here it is nonetheless. Uh, it's giving its parts. Uh, to other chargers so they'll live on as well and just wow what what a loss here even had the hideaway headlights there it's a 
the 70 hideaway headlights on the Charger just really, really just obliterated. Okay, that's volume 21 of WTF is that doing in the junkyard. I wanted to make a note. Uh, the data plate on the uh, Continental was missing, so I couldn't have just looked at it just to find out the, uh, the year. There was uh, no markings of the year on the car, so I just called it a 1962 Continental. I think it's anywhere between 62 and 64. Also, that, that Charger got a lot of attention. I think even like Hot Rod Magazine uh, did a post on Facebook about that Charger. So that definitely ruffled a lot of feathers that, that a 70 Charger popped up at the, uh, at the yard. Um, anyhow, we're going to be doing more videos. I'm hoping I'm going to be getting some work done on the uh, Maverick and the Cougar as the uh, Lemons Rally is fast approaching. Um, I'm still trying to get the uh, registration sorted out on both those cars, but I think I'm, I'm really close to that. And then uh, we'll be getting some work done on that. So we hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell. Uh, leave us uh, some comments in the comment section about what your favorite car was. It's probably that Charger because... That's just really sad to see. And until next time, I'll be seeing you.